Hey everyone, welcome back to Unraveling the Pattern. I'm Lauren. We've got some fun Wheel of Time Season 2 news, including a tease of a release date for an upcoming full trailer and new promotional stills to go through. And I have very little time, so remember to like the video, subscribe to Unraveling the Pattern, view the chapters below to skip around as needed. And since I don't do sponsors for now, please consider supporting me here on YouTube or on Patreon like these wonderful people. Spoiler warning, this video will cover Wheel of Time Seasons 1 and 2 on Prime Video and full book spoilers through Book 3, The Dragon Reborn. So if you haven't read through The Dragon Reborn, or if you wish to remain completely spoiler free, this video might not be for you. Our first bit of news is that we got a new special edition of The Great Hunt, Book 2, which is being released on July 18th through Tor Books. I personally don't like this cover very much, but it's still better than some of the original covers, and it obviously isn't meant to appeal to show watchers, so I'll give it a pass. There was a special edition of The Eye of the World that was released previous to Season 1, and it actually sold very well, so it makes sense they would do this again. I actually think it's funny that Moraine is the main focus of the cover, considering that her character is not really featured in the book very much outside of a few chapters. It is cool seeing Rand and Moraine here. Rand has his Heronmark sword, and he appears to be wearing the same coat that he's wearing in this shot from one of the teasers. Moraine looks like she's in travel mode, but I have a hard time believing that Rand and Moraine will actually step foot in Tarvalon in Season 2, so I'm guessing this is just in the background to hint that some of the book takes place in the White Tower. Actually, now that I think about it, there is a possibility that Moraine and Land will return to Tarvalon in Season 2. We've seen a couple of other promotional images and shots from teasers that imply that somehow Moraine and Land have their horses back, which were last seen being left behind near the Waygate outside of Tarvalon in Episode 7 of Season 1. I think this promotional image of Land with his horse could be from 90's Accepted Test, but there also seems to be a scene where Moraine is scared off of her horse by a fade. It's good to remember though that Moraine was banished from the White Tower in Season 1, but not the city, so she could go back to the city. We know Season 2 will likely start with a time jump, so it is possible that Moraine and Lan will be dropping Nynaeve and Egwene off in the city at the start of the season, and maybe Lan will then go and get their horses back before they leave to find Rand. Speaking of all these complex timelines, I've been very busy with work lately, but I've been working on a video where I'm discussing all of this in more detail. I'm piecing together every single image or shot from teasers that we've received so far in an attempt to try and make sense of the Season 2 story. I'm really excited about that video and I'm hoping to release it before we get a new trailer. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. Speaking of the trailer, this is just speculation, but I'm convinced we'll be seeing the first full Season 2 trailer during San Diego Comic Con, sometime between July 20th and 23rd. The Tweeter of Chaos, as we lovingly call the official Wheel of Time Twitter account, posted an image of them at work with some clues. First, they have a unique keychain with the Wheel of Time Serpent logo and an inscription in the Old Tongue. Some eagle-eyed fans on Twitter were able to translate the Old Tongue. It means Tweeter of Chaos. But more importantly, these fingers are sitting on three keys, S, D, and two fingers on C, S, D, C, C. San Diego Comic-Con. I'm sure we'll be getting a full trailer sometime during San Diego Comic-Con in July. And I'm sure we'll learn more about specific times and the panel as we get closer. I'm super excited for that because it gives me exactly one month to try and catch up on all my work stuff and everything I want to do on the channel before analyzing the real trailer. One more thing about this image. I think we all lost the game. Finally, we got four new promotional images to unravel. I'll be adding this to my massive Season 2 story speculation video as well, which now has 95 stills to go through. But let's dig into these and see what we can discover. First, we have Perrin with golden eyes. I love seeing this. It's still unclear if Perrin's eyes will go permanently gold in the show like they do in the books, or if they'll only be yellow when he's in beast mode. I'm guessing the latter for reasons I'll point out in a minute. It's interesting that Perrin is holding a shield here. I'm guessing Perrin will still be conflicted about whether to fight or not. We've seen him carrying a sword in other promotional images, but I don't think he'll choose to fight until later. Also, I just noticed as I was editing that this shield in this shot matches the shield that Perrin's holding. I don't know what it means, but it looks like this is a Shinaran shield. I like his internal struggles with violence in the books and his attraction to the way of the leaf in the show. And obviously because of what happened with his wife in season one, he's even more paranoid than his book counterpart about doing violence. From what we've seen and heard of Season 2 so far, he'll be gaining more perspective from different people about violence, including the Aiel, and I think he'll eventually choose to fight by the end of Season 2. When I first saw this shot, I was sure that it takes place during a final battle at the end of the season. Another promotional still from a few weeks ago shows Perrin in the same clothing and in what looks like a similar location, with Avienda and Masima here. Notice that Masima is wearing Shan Chan armor, and Avienda is covered in blood. The blood is important though, because Perrin doesn't have any blood or injuries on his face in this shot. 
But if you look closely at some of the other shots from other teasers, Perrin has the same blood patterns. So I'm now convinced that this new shot takes place earlier, probably just before this sequence, where he and Loyal and the others seem to be forced to kneel and make oaths to the Shan Chan. But notice that Perrin's eyes aren't yellow in this shot, which again makes me think that he'll only have golden eyes when he's angry or getting violent, or possibly when he's in contact with wolves. Could this blood on his face be Hopper's or Elias's blood? I have a theory that Elias and Hopper might be the same character in the show, but I'll talk more about that another time. The next promo still shows the three Wonder Girls, Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine. We previously got a close-up view of Kira Coveney as Elaine long ago, back when she was announced to be in the show. I've thought for a long time that this was likely an image of her with the other girls getting ready to enter into a way gate, probably with Leandrin, somewhere in Tarvalon, so that they could go and help Rand in Falma. Now I'm even more convinced of that, though this could also be them coming out of a waygate on the other side and being ambushed by the Shan Chan. Still, their dresses look very clean and they look like they're just getting ready to leave on a trip. Perhaps instead this is where they're meeting Leandrin somewhere in the tower, and then they'll leave to the waygate that we saw in Season 1 that's outside of the city. Anyway, the most interesting detail in this image to me is the fact that all three of them are basically wearing the same dress, except that Nynaeve has the colors on her cuff, which matches more or less with the accepted dress in the books. We know that Nynaeve will definitely be going through her accepted test in Season 2. This previous image shows her with one of the accepted test arches behind her, and we've analyzed other shots from a Season 3 interview as well that made us sure this background was the accepted test chamber, which Rafe said would show up in Seasons 2 and 3. Keep in mind that the Aiel women in this set location are just there for an interview and aren't likely to be in this location in the White Tower in the show. The funny thing about this new image is that the stone arch in the background is actually a bit more in line with the description of the waygates in the books, though we don't see carved leaves and vines. I'm still holding out hope that we'll get some version of the more accurate book waygate and waygate keys at some point. Anyway, it's awesome to see Nynaeve wearing a great serpent ring as well, and she's still wearing her Two Rivers belt from Season 1, which is a great nod to the fact that Nynaeve never fully gives up her heritage. Another interesting thing to note here is that Egwene and Elaine appear to be in all white and don't appear to have colors on their cuffs. I know there's been some speculation about whether or not Egwene and Elaine will also have their accepted tests in Season 2, but I think this pretty much puts that speculation to rest. Now I don't know for sure if we'll see Egwene or Elaine returning to the White Tower for Season 3, but I'm glad they won't be getting their accepted tests in Season 2 at least. That said, this could be a trick. Notice that Nynaeve's left hand has the colored cuff and great serpent ring, but Elaine and Egwene's left hands are covered. I doubt this is the case, but I suppose it's slightly possible that they're all accepted at this point, and the colored cuffs and ring are only on the left side, but I don't think that's likely. It actually makes more thematic sense to keep Egwene as a novice for the entirety of the show, for spoilery reasons that I won't get into here. Finally, one last detail in this image. I love how the upper part of the novice dress cloak, or cape, sort of matches the look of the show version of the Shan Chan IDOM device. We don't know exactly how the IDOM will function in the show, but in the books, it's a silver collar and bracelet attached by a silver cord. In the show, it appears they've removed the cord completely and made the device more of an armor looking shoulder and neck cover. There's also some speculation that this mouth cover pacifier looking thing is part of the IDOM device, but I don't think it is. I think this is just a dehumanizing thing that the Shan Chen use to keep their slaves from talking. Anyway, I thought it was interesting that the novice dress has a bit of a similarity to the Shan Chan enslavement device. Moving on, we've got this image of Lan. There really isn't much to pick up from this. I suppose this thing in the background could be part of a waygate, but it's really hard to tell. Did you see anything in this image that's worth noting? Finally, this image of Donal Finn as Matt has me hyped. Partially because it's the first image of him that we've seen where he doesn't look super depressed. He even appears confident. But mostly this excites me because we see that he has a quarterstaff. I'm more convinced than ever that this scene from another teaser is Matt fighting some people with his quarterstaff near the warder's training grounds in the White Tower. There's that famous scene in Book 3 where Matt defeats Elaine's brothers, Gawain and Galad, in the warder's training area. I'm now beginning to think that we might not see Matt fighting against Gawain and Galad, but we will see him defeat some very strong fighters with his quarterstaff. I think we might not get Gawain or Galad in the show until Season 3, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I first thought that this blurred person that Matt is looking at in this shot is probably a Shan Chan soldier, but then I looked at this golden shape of what I assume is a shoulder, and it doesn't really match the armor of the Shan Chan. Notice how it sort of points upwards, but the Shan Chan soldiers have golden shoulder armor that's more rounded, shaped like a three-eyed Grom head, or just these darker looking shoulder pad things. Now, I have two crazy theories about this scene. One, this could actually be High Lord Turok. We know that Rand will face Turok based on some of the images we've seen. In the book, Rand fights and defeats Turok, a known blademaster. 
and we can clearly see Rand standing in this scene with his back towards Turok and his guards here. I believe the Takaran Riyadh podcast were the first to notice in the more recent promotional images that this background behind Ran matches the background in this shot, which means Ran turns and faces Turok and his guards here. But what if Matt also shows up and faces Turok? I don't think this is a direct match either, but this angled looking shoulder piece seems to match Turok's strange armor a bit better than the other Shan Chan armor. It would make Turok's defeat more realistic if Rand defeats him with the help of Matt and possibly even Perrin. I also have a wild theory that Ishamayel will show up and kill Turok before Rand has the chance to fight him, and then Rand's final fight will be with Ishamayel instead, but that's for another time. My second theory, which is my favorite, is that this is actually a shot of Matt looking into Archer Hawkwing's face for the first time, just after blowing the Horn of Valir. Wouldn't it be amazing if they gave us a little tease of one of the Heroes of the Horn this early on? It also makes sense that the Shan Chan armor and colors would sort of match up with the colors of Ardor Hawkwing's armor. So what do you think? Am I crazy? Could this be Ardor Hawkwing? Let me know what I missed in the comments, and please remember to keep your comments respectful. It's my channel, so I have the right to delete any comments that I feel are inappropriate, racist, bigoted, or otherwise hateful. I usually remove comments with any sort of name calling as well. Until next time, let the dragon ride again on the winds of Prime.